Hey, so I'm going to keep this brief. It's already probably my longest video yet. So here I make a Project Zomboid mod from start to finish, which was a huge undertaking, but hopefully it inspires at least one of you out there. I have very few subscribers, so I do ask humbly that you subscribe. It keeps me motivated to continue making content for you all. Um, I also want to give a quick little shout out to Blackbeard as he introduced me to modding with his videos. And I'm no expert in Lua programming, so it's recommended that you do a bit of research on it before you get started. But if you have a background in like JavaScript, you should be all right. And anyway, without further ado, enjoy. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to dive in right here. So I had an idea. Um, I am the creator of three different mods in Project Zomboid, uh, which are, I think, the um, hardtack, skill literature, and more nudie mags. So I thought, you know what? I, I had another idea for a mod. And instead of just doing it, I thought I would record the process. So um, if anyone else wants to make a mod, they can. If you want to follow along with this and just make a, a copy of this too, you can also do that, no problem at all. But uh, I'll I'll show you just kind of how to, to start fresh on a Project Zomboid mod. So first thing, I have the Zomboid folder um, pinned here. But as you see, you just go into C users yourself and then Zomboid. So we'll just start there. C users myself or whatever your computer's named. And then there's a Zomboid folder created when you download the game. So <clears throat> this, I guess, tutorial relies on you knowing, like having the game and kind of knowing a little bit about getting around. But I'll try and make it as simple as I can. So what we're going to do is uh, in here in the mods folder, this is where you would put the mods that you're using. Like in this case, um, these are some mods that I'm playing around with. This Diet Clork is, it's a little joke from a book that I wrote. And then the Extra Craftables is like a mod I was kind of working on. This just adds like a can of Diet Coke to the game. And this is like my test mod. And anytime I want to test a mod, I put it in here. So this, this is where you're going to put your mods once you create them inside of a folder. And the folder is going to be very specific. So follow this very very carefully so i'm going to go to the desktop on the desktop i'm going to create a new folder this folder is what's going to be dragged into here so just name it what you want it doesn't have to be any specific syntax but in this case i'm going to call it wyatt patrick's um I, you know i didn't think about what i want to call it so we're just going to call it uh dried meats because what i want to do is I want to create little packages. And I want the packages to be located in different homes and like different food places. And then what they are, because I love using meat in the game as like recipes and things like that. <clears throat> but, um, you know, trapping is is a bit of a, an involved process. Fishing, it kind of gets old. I think it'd be cool to be able to find different meats, just raw meats out in the world, you know, a couple months in. And so what I want to do is I'm going to create those little like freeze dried packages of meat that you find. So one thing you can do, so we'll just open up Notepad here. Actually, no, we're not going to use Notepad. We're going to use Notepad++. Um, this is some stuff that I have here. This is like my coding, my little, and I can release these things like this. If I wanted to um, increase somebody's skill level, I mean, this is these are just the functions to do it. They're not really listed anywhere, like the syntax or, or what they're called. Like I had to look up that. You know, metalworking is actually called metal welding with a capital W, and um, foraging is plant scavenging with a capital S. Like, you would think perks dot foraging, but this, it's written differently in the game's code. This is what is going to give you, like, if I wanted to give the player direct XP, I use that in a couple of my things. It's just, it's a list of all kinds of different things like that. So we're going to make a new thing, and we're going to sort of document out what I want to do. So I want freeze dried meats in the game. So all I have to do is add one item, and that's going to be um, a meat package. And then there are a couple different meats in the game, so we'll just say, for right now, we'll do steak, chicken, um, I don't know what else is pork? No, <laughs> you didn't see that. So steak, chicken, and pork. So I'm also going to, what's going to happen is you're going to find the meat packages, uh, and then there's going to be um, a recipe to just open the package, 
And all I'm doing right now is storyboarding out what I want to do. So I want, to, I want you to be able to find the meat packages in the world, recipe to open the package, and then I, from there I want it to randomize one of three meats, which I'm going to put uh, these right here. Steak, chicken, and pork. Um, add to player inventory. Um, and then I guess uh, I want to have it so that you can another recipe, another three recipes. No, come on. Um, oh my God, three recipes to add water to the dried meats. We're gonna have to call these dried. And convert them to normal. Now the the items that I'm gonna create for these are not gonna be edible items. So I want that to be important. That you're not you're not gonna be able to just eat a freeze dried steak. I mean maybe I might make it something you can eat, because these are gonna be non perishable. So let's write that down. Dried meats will be non perishable. Uh, they will also cause great unhappiness, uh, boredom, and thirst if you do decide to eat them. Calorie and fat values will be lower, I think, than if cooked properly. Uh, actually, we'll do the hunger calorie and fat values. So that's kind of the mod. I'm going to need to create four items, which is the meat package and the three dried meats, um, four recipes, Winsters. this is going to need to be dried meat package. Dried steak, dried uh, chicken, and dried pork. Okay, and the four recipes I'm going to need to create are going to be open package, uh, rehydrate steak, chicken, and pork. Now I'm using a bunch of hotkeys and stuff. If you're using this program, Notepad++, if you don't have it, get it. All it is is this, but pretty. Um, so I just, you know, it's, it's like a dark mode version. I'm hitting Control D to duplicate, and that's just, you know, a way to, to do things, um, keep them a little more organized. So I need to create four items, I need to create four recipes, and then I need to create uh, a distribution. Yeah, distribution, file, and that's it, I think. So this is going to add to various locations. Now, <clears throat> let's start fresh. I mean, I've got plenty of resources and different things, but I'll kind of show you where to get started because that's one of the biggest things with creating a mod is not knowing where to start. I mean, you, if you already have a mod built, that's great. But my first mod, which was this Diet Clark mod, um, it was not easy to make because I didn't know where to go, where to start, where to find files, that kind of thing. So within mods and Zomboid is where you would put your mod when you're done. Prior to that, you're going to want to navigate to, this is just a shortcut that I have on my desktop, but this is the media folder. Now this is, here's your file path. For me, where I installed Steam is on my D drive. So on my D drive, I have the Steamy folder, right? And I just called it Steamy because I didn't want it to be called Steam and overlap with Steam somehow, my brain is just dumb. But go into Steam Apps, and then Common. In Common is Project Zomboid, and in Project Zomboid is Media. This is pretty much where the bulk of the files you'll ever mess with are. Do not edit the files in here. This will change your game, it's bad. But in here is where like all the little files are for, um, for the game. And 
uh, this is what we're kind of going to kind of go off of. So uh, you'll have to move around and navigate and find things. I think scripts is where most things are, right? So here's items underscore food and scripts. So if we take this, I have it copied. So if I go into my D drive, I have a um, PZ mods folder. And here I have my for testing and, I, no, that's not it. I have for reference. These are all mods that other people built. That is another really important thing. If you can find the mods, um, that other people made on your computer. Those are the files are somewhere. These are all just a copy of those. And this is so that I can go in and I can look at their code and just see and learn more about how things work. Now, with this, I think I can work with just the codes that exist in the in the files here because like looking around and finding stuff is a huge part of it, right? Say you want something to exhaust the player. You're going to have to find out, you know, what that code, piece of code looks like to do that. But in here it was just the default files. These are the copies of the files in here that I use. So I would suggest you do that. You make a new folder, put the things in here. I have item food already. So we're going to close out of here because we don't really need this. But keep in mind, in your media scripts, item food is what I'm looking at here. So we're going to grab item food and just drag it into here and open it. Now you can see these are all the food items in the game, right? Canned chili, canned beverages, all these different things. This is the name of that item. So if I wanted that item to show up in the game, I would have to type in capital L, lowercase u-t-t-e-t-t-u-c-e, -T -T -E, right? That would be, uh, yeah, I just spelled lettuce wrong while looking at it. Don't judge me. This would be how you're going to declare the food item. And you're going to want to put the various things here as well. So I'm not creating any new meat items. So I'm just going to command F and look for steak, which is right here. This is the item steak. So I'm going to copy steak, I'm going to make a new file, and I'm going to paste it here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy it. This is the syntax. You've got the word item, you've got the uh, name of the item, and then you've got the open bracket, close bracket, and everything about that item right there. Now that I've found that, let's see if I can also get chicken. Um, Yes, because these are the uncooked versions, I believe. If not, you know, that's trial and error. We'll figure it out. So chicken, steak, and frog meat. Mm. Pork chops, right? That's the thing. Yes, here we go, pork chop. Okay, so I'm going to grab that as well and bring that down here. now. I'm probably not going to use all this, okay? But these are the items that I want to be able to create: is the steak, the chicken, and the pork chop. Now, if I'm going to add items to the game, this is what I need to do. I need to get the module base. I can't explain why. I don't know if I'm being honest, but it is what I've done for my code in the past, and that is, oops, that is just what I know to be the case, right? So we've got the module and the capital B, lowercase a s e. So base, and then we get the open bracket here. And at the bottom, we will have a matching closing bracket, okay? And that is just what's called like an object notation. And then in here, I have item steak, which is the name of it, open and close bracket. Item chicken, open and close bracket. And we're gonna do this. Keep everything kind of on its own little indentation space, or whatever. That's what I like to do, okay? So let's look at the steak first, right? Because I'm going to need to create freeze-dried steak. Now, um, let's see. It's not going to be in any of all the recipes. These are things that can be added to. What this means is the hunger change is negative 40. So if you have 40 hunger and eat a full steak, it will give you, it will replenish your hunger by 40%, basically. If you were to add the steak to a pizza or a stew, or a stir fry griddle pan, it's going to take 20 hunger of that 40, so half, right? For the chicken, um, it has hunger change of 36. So you can add it to three different pizza recipes, three pie recipes, or you can add it to um, six salads. You can make a salad out of it six times. That's what the evolved recipe means. So uh, we're gonna get rid of that in these because we're going to make our own, um, I'm going to call it WP, that way if, if 
somebody else makes a freeze-dried steak somewhere in the world, mine will be different. So we'll call it dried steak. And then we're just going to add that WP dried to the beginning of these as well. <clears throat> so now I have my own um, dried pork chop, chicken, and steak. I could change that C to a lowercase if I wanted. I don't want to, but I won't just because it's going to make it a little nicer to see that. So display name is just going to be dried steak. This can have a space in it. This cannot. The item needs to be all one word. All right? Can't start with a number. Can't start with like a, any fancy characters. Just try to stick with text. Display category is going to be food. Type is food. Weight, we'll say it's going to be a lot less weight, so 0.1. Um, we'll do that for all three of them. The icon is going to be a little bit different. We're going to need to make icons. So we're going to change that and this. Uh, see how it's cap capital here and lowercase here? It's bad. Dangerous, uncooked, true. Yeah, we'll leave that because it is still raw meat. Um, bad in microwave, true. Yeah, I guess we'll leave that there. Um, hmm. Days fresh and days totally rotten. We're gonna get rid of those because they are non-perishable. That will keep it from perishing. Uh, that'll that'll get rid of its timer. It's only going to start to get bad with those. I think I'm gonna get rid of is cookable, um, which means I can get rid of the minutes to cook, minutes to burn, and good hot. And then we'll get rid of the microwave thing too. Um, bad, cold, true. No, that's not really, I'm worried about that. Uh, food type is beef. We don't really need the food type. I'm not certain what it does, but I can tell you just by by guessing that um, it's probably not really that important for me. So if a pork chop when hydrated is gonna give you a hunger change of 30, we're gonna give this a hunger change of 20. Um, calories, we're only gonna give it uh, about half, so maybe 70. It's not half, but it's close. Lipid 6, we'll give it 2. And proteins 25, we'll give it maybe 20. So it's not it's not nearly as good of a food item dried. You need to, to moisten it to make it better. And we're going to do that with a recipe file. It's different. Um, evolve recipe name, pork. We don't care about that. World static model. We're not going to make different models for it, so don't worry about that. We're going to just keep the pork chop chicken and steak models. Um, hunger change 40, we're gonna change that to 30, and this one from 36 to 26, I guess. Uh, calories from 150, we'll just change that to 70, and change this to maybe to 150. You know, we'll just make it give you a lot less because it's dried and like freeze dried, crusty, it's bad. Uh, 9.35 lipids, we'll change that to like four, and from 31 proteins to 12. 24 maybe. I'm just throwing these numbers out. I don't know if freeze-dried foods have really that much less, but you know, whatever. Um, so lipids 9 will change to 5, and proteins 18 will change to like 10. So these are going to be really sucky food items, but they are dried items. And we need one more item, which is not going to be like a food item. It's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to go look into the items.txt, which is again in that same folder. Um, and we're going to look at something with a type of normal. That's just, all it is is just an item that sits there and it does nothing. Um, but we're going to look for sort of a different one, maybe this. Baking tray is a good like base item for it. So we're going to put that above the rest. And world static model. We're going to get rid of that for right now. We want to put one in there eventually, but we're not going to worry about it. So display category cooking um, we're gonna make it food so it's category when it shows up in the game will show us food but the game will only it'll know that it's normal if it, if it type were food um, it would be something maybe edible or you know it'll have different like that's type is food right um, that tells the game this is an item that your player can eat 
and then it's going to look for these things how much hunger is it going to change now there's another thing I want to do I want it to make you thirsty so we're going to look in here we're going to do thirst thirst change negative four so this is canned carrots there's change negative four so that means it's going to reduce your thirst by four in other words quench your thirst um, we want this to do the opposite so under hunger change we're going to paste this thirst change and we're going to instead of make it negative we're going to give it uh, about 20. each of these are going to give you a pretty substantial um, increase in your thirst so your thirst change is going to be 18, meaning it'll have the red numbers. It'll say 18 additional thirst. Notice I'm keeping the comma after it. I'm keeping the syntax, capital T, capital C. Um, cool. And then baking tray is an existing item. We're going to do WP for Wyatt Patrick, and we're going to do um, dried meat uh, bag. Simple. The display name is going to be dried meat bag now this is like a tab and all this weird thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change these to a simple space it's not gonna have a metal value by the way as for the icon we're gonna make our own icon so we'll call that uh, WP dried meat bag just same as the item name it doesn't have to be the same but in my case it will be um, this, yeah, so the icon is going to be its own little, you know, icon equals thing, right? A lot of ways you can do this to make it look a little bit nicer. Like in this case, this is the farthest out equal sign in this, this thing. So I'm going to push this one out and then I'm going to push this one out. And this is, it's a small cosmetic change, but it can really help you keep your code um, a little more organized. And these additional spaces won't read in the code, so it's not going to affect anything. but it's just going to allow you to look at all of your stuff in a, a quick line here. So like how this line all starts at the same indent, this one will all start at the same indent. So you can see all your information right there. This is the farthest out one. So we'll push these ones out a little bit. This is not necessary. You can probably skip this part of the video. I'm sure it'll be another 15, 20 seconds for me to get all this done. But uh, with as few items as we have, it's just nice to have um, have it be a little well organized is all. I usually keep my code as well organized as I can. Sometimes it gets gets away from me. <clears throat> um, as far as Project Zomboid, now this is uh, using LUA or Lua, which is I guess like uh, means Luna or Moon, something like that. Um, it means Moon in a different language, and it's not a coding language that I'm necessarily that well versed in but I know enough just of general programming um, that I know like uh, kind of what things mean so like putting the comma after this is important if the comma were missing the code wouldn't work right and it might not even load your game um, things like true and false I mean, they, in this case, in this programming language, they can be capital or lowercase. Some programming languages require it to be something else, but you know, this would be what's called a Boolean. So it's either one thing or the other. Like in this case, bad cold is true, meaning that if you eat it from frozen, it's going to cause you unhappiness until you let it thaw out. Bad in microwave means if you cook it in the stove versus microwave, it's gonna be better. Those, of course, we can get rid of because again, we are not eating this item. This is not something like we are, but it's not, all we wanted to do is, is, you know, F up your hunger and thirst, right? We don't want to make it dangerous for you to eat. I mean, well, actually it is, isn't it? Uh, dangerous uncooked. I don't know if that necessitates that it be cooked. Like, I, I don't know if dangerous uncooked being a property means that it's cookable. Because I don't want it to be cookable. I want it to be just an, an item, basically. Um, but we'll find that out. That's part of it. I don't know. So we're going to learn. Um, this isn't me knowing what I'm doing and going into doing it. This is me figuring out what to do so that I can um, put together a mod. And you can see it. That's all this is. It's probably going to be like an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Even longer, maybe. Um, 
But this is more or less just me making a new mod and you kind of learning with me, right? So we got our items. This doesn't need to be there. So we have the module, base, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare it against one of my other mods. Um, you probably want to go and find a different mod that already exists, right? Download a mod and go into your um, workshop mods. So this, as you can see if I hover my mouse over it, is gonna show up. I again have an alias, I have a little shortcut here. Um, but I have uh, in my steamy steam apps workshop, right? So in here you can go into common project zomboid and you can get to your um, what did I say? The media, right? And this is where you go into like scripts and here's all your little uh, files. But if you were to go back up and instead of going into common from Steam Apps, you go into workshop and then you go into content. 108600 is the code for Project Zomboid. In there, these are all the mods that I have downloaded from that. So you just you go into one of them. These are the Steam IDs. So you can see the Steam ID on the mod or you can, um, if you click on, if you open Project Zomboid, you can see that it's it'll be there. So we're gonna go ahead and just open this. Myopia, Hyperopia, so that's one of the mods. I don't want that one, so we're gonna go back. Um, it's a great mod, it's just, you know, it's not really gonna add anything. So we're gonna just keep looking through. You can do this, but I, I wouldn't. Um, I would just figure out what mod you want to investigate. If you only have one in here, it'll be a lot easier, but... Um, Let's see, we'll find Cast Nails mod. Okay, so this one I know adds a new item to the game. So we're going to open the Cast Nails mod and then this just kind of shows you the syntax of how everything should look, um, which I'll also show one of my mods on this video. That way you can see how it's built and you can at the very least duplicate the mod that I'm making. And you can change a few things around and you can say, oh, I want the dried steak, but I want it to be, I want the hunger change to be 50. So you can go in and just change that three to a five, save it, run it, and you've got new code. A lot of coding and programming is is taking what other people have done and kind of making it your own thing. In here, so we have the scripts and the textures. Textures would just be for um, the your icons, right? And we'll make our own little icons and get those working and everything. Um, scripts is where we're going to see various things like this. So castnailsmod.txt. This is a single file that's going to contain uh, a lot of different things. So module is craft nails. That's like the name of his mod. If we go back out to here and look up the info. Um, cast nails mod is the name, the ID, and so, well, actually, module. I'm wondering if that if you just declare it here, and that's that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty small mod. It's just got the two textures in this file. Anyway, whatever. Um, so I guess you can just call this whatever you want, but <clears throat> I, you can keep base here as well. I don't think that's going to cause any issues. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, cause yeah, new four. That's the one I'm doing right now. So we should also save this. So we're going to save it. Um, not in here. We're going to save it in our desktop and we're just going to drop it in W Patrick's dried meats for right now. We're going to call it, um, WP dried uh, meets items. I like to keep things saved like separately. Now notice I kept it at a .txt, so it's gonna just be a text file. Um, and if we go into here, I'm gonna keep this open down in this little corner. Okay, and this will be everything. So this is the equivalent of this right here. So cast nails mod, and this is W Patrick's drive meets. So inside of here, we're going to need to create a media folder and do these little subfolder things. But for right now, let's get all the files figured out what we need to put in the mod. And then we'll worry about how to structure it. Um, not normally how I do it and not, probably not how you should do it, but just for the sake of getting things created. That's what we're going to do. Um, drive meat bag, got that, the type, the weight. The weight's going to be pretty low, actually. So we're going to do like 0.15. And then each of the meats, when you open it, it's gonna, that 05 is going to be like the plastic or whatever. So you're just going to have 0.1, so that makes sense. And this could fail, too. This could suck. So we're going to save, so the little red icon turns blue, and we're good. Um, items, we'll close that out for right now, because we've got the default files here for when I need to, to check them again. Note also items.txt, it's right there. 
and then recipes.txt is the next thing we're going to pull up and, and mess with. But for right now, this is all you have to do to create items in the game. You give it the module, the base, uh, and then you create your items. And um, you just put the properties in, and then that's it. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it's really it's not difficult. Um, I'm just double checking, make sure pork chop, dried pork chop. Actually, make it say freeze dried, that's cool. So, display name is between the equal sign and the comma is going to be exactly what the item is called in the game. There's a chance this won't work, so we're not going to you know, worry about it too much. We're just going to save what we have. Now we've got the items, right? So cast nails is having module and then there's the recipes and then the items. It kind of puts it all in one, but I like to keep them separate. Um, the recipes are pretty cool too, right? So the recipes will go ahead and open because that's the next part. This is from the game itself. This is like the default, right? Um, and so what it is, is again, you have the module base. So we're going to copy pretty much that. Um, and we're going to make a new file, paste all that in there. And we're going to save it as WP Drive Meats. We're going to change this to Recipes. And we're going to change item to Recipe. So the first one is going to be um, open meat bag. Now here you can put spaces because after the, the recipe and before the open bracket, it's just going to read this and this is what's going to display. So when you go to click it, it's going to, you know, you right click and you're going to see like open meat bag and whatever. Um, None of this really is is necessary here. I'm just I reason I copied this is so that I have my item names and everything, right? So like right here, which actually I probably shouldn't have deleted that one. WP Drive Meat Bag, right? Same thing here. So this is the result of my recipe. So we'll break it down a couple lines here and just look at the way that recipes are made. So um, <clears throat> in the brackets, the first thing is going to be what is uh, required, the required items. So for a smash bottle, all you need is um, either wine empty, which is uh, if you go into the items, wine empty is in there, slash, which means you can use one of these things. So it's kind of an either or. So wine empty two, whiskey empty, beer empty. So of these four different bottles, those are what you can, those are the, the ingredients required. And then there's a comma. The comma then says next thing. Result is the item name, so smashed bottles, which you would get. But this, again, is what displays in the game. Time is how long it takes in, I believe, uh, I don't know. I don't really know how, like, what, what measurement it is. Not, it's not 20 seconds, and it's not 20 milliseconds. It might be like 20 ticks or something, which I think a tick is 20 milliseconds. So maybe this is like a half a second almost. I'm not really sure. but. And, you know, lots of different um, ways to figure out like how much time that's going to take. For us, it's we're going to do it maybe 60 because if it's, you know, you smash a bottle, maybe take three times as long to smash a bottle and that's going to be open. So we're going to make our time say about 60. Sound is optional. Some things you can see in certain recipes, some you don't. Like here we have category. So when you go into recipes, you know, the survivalist category is, is where you'll find the make steak recipe. So different kind of steak though. Make note. Um, on give XP, you can make it give you XP. We're not going to give the player XP for opening a package of meat. We're going to give them a, a little bit for, um, we call it, uh, rehydrating it though. I think that's going to be important to give them a little bit. So let's make note of that real quick. Where's my, is this it? Yes, so uh, rehydrate steak. We're gonna do give cooking XP, maybe like three, not a lot, right? So we just want it to give a little bit of XP when you when you do that. Um, but yeah, so these are the recipes here. So basically what I'm doing is finding a recipe 
that is going to um, most closely resemble what I'm trying to do. So like open egg carton. All it has is one ingredient for the recipe, which is egg carton, and then a result, which is egg equals 12. So you get 12 eggs. The egg is just the name of the item, just like in my thing, drive meat bag. So what that's going to do is give me, um, when I open this, I want it to run a function. And then I think it has to give me a result or else it's not going to work. So that's another problem. It's a small problem, but it's a problem nevertheless. So I think what I'm going to have to do is, hmm. I don't know quite how to do what I want to do here. Um, because I'm pretty sure if I make a recipe that doesn't have a result, it's not going to work. I think I've tried that before. So what we'll do is, uh, <clears throat> hmm. Instead of a plastic package, maybe we can make it like a like a thing. Okay, so let's do the find command and find sardines. So open can sardines. So can sardines is the thing you need. Oh, there we go. Times sixty. Uh, on give XP none. That's fine. We're still gonna give it some XP, but I got a different way of doing that. So. Um, Recipe, open canned sardines. Yeah, we'll just copy this and put it in here. And then we'll just, there we go. So instead of canned sardines, I want my dried meat bag. So we're gonna take the item and that's gonna be, move this in, there we go, it's just back and forth. So we're gonna make that our only little thing that we need is the dried meat bag. The rest of this is not necessary to keep. Nope, messed something up. No, it didn't, okay. So, dried meat bag is all we need for the recipe. That's the one ingredient. The result is going to be uh, an empty can. Now I need to find that item. So in the default files, we'll go to items, do the find, and I think I can. Um, let's try empty. Bottle empty, water bottle, oh, tin, well, tin opener, tin, maybe tin, tin can? Um, no, this isn't really getting me what I want. Uh, empty can, nope, that's not it, nope, hmm. I guess maybe no. That's that would be okay. Um, hmm. How do I find that items food? Oh, here we go. Hold on. Uh, eat type can. Replace on use tin can empty. There we go. So that's what I want. Uh, tin can empty is the name, and it's not in the items. You know what, it could be in new items. It's another file located in there somewhere. Oh, look, there it is. <laughs> so tin can empty, so it's gonna give you a can as a result. Uh, we'll change it from bag to open canned meat. Um, so I gotta change bag to can. We don't have to, but it wouldn't make sense otherwise. So now we change the name of the item. We're gonna change it here. <clears throat> Drive meat can, save that, save that. So open canned meat, drive meat can, result in empty, times 60. Category cooking, uh, recipe dot on give XP. I think cooking 
3 is the name of the function that gives you 3 XP in cooking. I'm pretty sure. So let's check the recipes. Um, should be, yes, here we go. So on give XP, cooking 10. Just look around this region. So make a jar of potatoes. That's, yeah, we don't want to give 10 XP for that. Um, we're just looking. We're looking to see if I can find another cooking thing. Here we go, cooking three. Yep, that's it. So on recipe, cooking three. So slicing cake and opening a can of meat, uh, rehydrating the meat are going to give you the same thing. So uh, grab this piece of code, and we don't actually want it to be there. We're going to put it on the other ones. So just tuck it off to the side. If you want, put two little dashes, or I think... Uh, if it's saved as .lua, two little dashes will will clear it. But if not, um, forward slash asterisk will open the comment, and asterisk forward slash will close it. So anything in between this right here, anything here, like it will not show up, right? Like it, it won't be read by the the code. It's called commenting out the code. So we're gonna just put that in there for right now and save it. So I have my canned meat. I don't need the space down there. The space here isn't necessary either, but it's nice. Um, so you get a tin can, that and that. There's one other thing I want to do, and I'm not sure what mods have it, but you can download my mod and you can find it. Because I'm just going to look in my own mods because I know that I have, um, I know that I have mods that that do what I want it to do. So I'm going to go into the for release. Uh, it's nudie mags, contents, mods, and then scripts. Would it be scripts? Recipes. OK, so yeah, um, when you relieve some stress in the nudie mags mod, it will run the function WP have a good time. So on create dot recipe dot on create. We're going to just copy that piece of code and paste it in there. Now, obviously, that's not what we're going to do, but we need to find that function. And I believe that's in Lua server recipe codes. So in here is where we're actually going to write LUA code. And here is just, these are just objects. These are just little um, bits of code that can be plugged in. And it reads them in a way that this is the, the correct syntax for what it, you know, what it recognizes as an item or a recipe. Right, LUA is actually writing the code. So we're going to look at the WP on create or WP have a good time. So starts with the word function and then recipe to on create is needs to be there. And so do the parentheses with item, result, and player. Um, this can be named anything you want, so we're gonna give it a name, but these have to be there. Uh, it has to end with the word end. And if you're doing the on create uh, like recipe dot on create. Um, it's going to be different than the recipe. Uh, add XP. So I'll show you what I mean. Because this really got me. This was a bad thing that happened to me. So hard tech contents mods this media Lua server. So this is the hard tech mod that I did now. See so how it says function recipe dot on give XP WP cooking. I did a cooking for four XP seven and eight. And all it did, the whole function just did player, got the player, got your XP, added for cooking, seven experience. And that's all it did. But notice it says in the parentheses, recipe, ingredients, result, and player. In here, it says items, result, player, selected item. Or I guess you can also do items, result, player. Notice the difference. Recipe, ingredient, result, player, item, result, player. If they're not like if the recipe dot on give XP doesn't have recipe and ingredients in and I think those are called arguments, it's not going to work. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me because I copied one of these and I, instead of, I changed, changed this from give XP to on create and I didn't think to change the arguments or args, I guess it's called. Um, and I'm not really certain. I think this just a uh, game needs this, but you don't need to really mess with that. I'll show you how easy it is to do so. 
we're going to grab all of this. We're going to copy it, and we're going to go into, we're going to make a new file. And we're going to paste it, and we're going to save it. And it's going to be in our desktop, Drive Meets, and it's just going to be called WP Dried Meats uh, Recipe Codes, or I'll call it functions. And now instead of .txt, we're going to save as .lua. Please note that that's an important thing. You can also go save as type and do lua. And that's going to save it as a lua file. Now you notice all these little bits and bobs pop up on the side if you have this program. If you don't, you're in, in, in just um, Notepad. It's fine. It won't show all that stuff, but I mean, it'll still show the same data. And it's it, it, the same program. You can read LUA files in Notepad. So you don't have to download this program. I just really like this program. But what we're going to do is all we're doing is adding um, for the dried meats. We're going we're gonna to need two different functions. One is uh, WP give meat. So that's going to randomize this function. All it's going to do is randomize between the different meats. And it's going to give you one of the three meats, just going to pick a number between one and three. And if it's one, it's going to give you steak. If it's two, it's going to give you chicken. If it's three, it's going to give you pork chop. Uh, freeze dried kind. And that's it. That's all this is going to do. And then the function for the recipe where that's going to use this, the on give XP recipe, that all that's going to do is, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? Uh, it's going to give you three cooking experience whenever you make these. So recipe rehydrate steak. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I just want to make sure these are um, these are good. So I'm just deleting everything around the word WP dried steak. And then this will be a pretty easy process. I think I'm going to make it take a little bit more time because you got to let it hydrate. So we're going to do uh, the result so WP dried steak is the only ingredient you need remember the comma it's incredibly important it will code will not run your mod will not work without the right make sure your commas are where they need to be um, the result is just going to be steak uh, time we're going to make it take about 250 uh, in-game, I guess, seconds. I'm not really sure. Again, not really sure. I guess it means like a game second. Um, whatever. Category is cooking on create. So on give XP, we want this function. Actually, we'll cut it out of there, paste it there. So I got commas at the end of everything. We've got the result, the time, the category, and uh, the XP that it gives you. Now we're going to copy that. Um, we're going to paste it two more times. Then we're going to do rehydrate chicken and rehydrate pork chop. Then we want the WP dried chicken and WP dried pork chop. Remember the lowercase c? That's important. And then steak. And then remember, the food, the item of the food, pork chop, has the capital C. So that's that's where the, uh, like, that's why that's really important. Because the result, if I did this, it would not give me what I want. It's got to be capital. So the rest of these are no longer necessary. We've got our recipes to rehydrate the pork chop, the chicken, and the steak. So this is what will show up when you right click it. And it'll show up this recipe. Um, this will be the only thing it requires, this. And then we're going to need water. So don't forget, that will be another thing. I guess we'll do water. Um, we'll do five units of water. And I believe that's correct. It's just water equals five. I'm going to double check because, again, I have a couple of mods that uh, show different things. So here. Um, okay, let's go into 
I don't think that I have anything randomizing. But from my notes, because again, I do have notes, um, the random function is some other ideas here. Don't look at them. Ha ha. Uh, and when I go to code this, keep in mind, I'm still learning. I'm new. So, you know, as I, as I learn, here we go. As I learn, like things are going to be bad. I might not code this the most efficient or very well. Um, but this one is so zomb rand3 is also shown on the PC wiki as a function. OK, so zomb rand x comma y generates a random number starting at x and ending one digit before y, I believe. So this is from the dismantle radio. So this is saying zomb rand1 comma 4 do this, so local r. So this is a function that just exists in the game. Um, so here's the function, the start of the function, on recipe, or recipe.onCreate dismantle radio. And the end of the function is right here. Okay, all these other ends are for different parts of it. So as it tabs out, local this just declares a variable. And this is a for loop, which has to have an end, which is right here. This end is from this else if. Like this if statement, it's a whole thing. I, if you don't really understand coding, I, I don't really want to make this a coding tutorial as much as just a you know tutorial for this. But we're going to basically copy this because I just want to do a little bit of that. So that's a little more complex than what I'm prepared to really teach out right now. I'm going to move this back over here because all I want to do is get rid of that. I don't want to do a for loop, but I want to do a zombie randomizer. And I want three possible options. Now, this is if r equals 1, um, 2, and 3. OK, so I don't want a loop. And we're going to do local. So we're just saying I'm creating a variable. And we'll call it um, meet chance equals zomb rand four. Now what that means is, and we'll put a little quote or uh, semicolon, don't need to, but I'm going to. So this is just saying I'm creating a, a piece of code and it's going to be meet chance. Zomb rand is something built into the game already. So what this is going to do is this is going to create, like it's going to randomize one through three and give me either the number one, the number two, or the number three. So meet chance, anytime this function runs, which is going to run every time I open the stake, it's going to um, every time this function runs, it's going to create the variable called meet chance, and it's going to give me either the number one, the number two, or the number three. After which, I would like if <clears throat> the game were to say if the uh, meet chance equals one, then player get inventory add item base dot stake. Um, if it's or else if meaning if it's not number one it's going to proceed through and not do this piece of code and I'll say else if meet chance equals two then player get inventory add item base dot chicken and then else if so it's not one and it's not two the only options are three so one two and three so three player get inventory add item base dot pork chop with a capital C because that is the name of the item. Um, yes, so result pork chop capital C. So now I have a function that all it does is it randomizes a number between one and three and then it checks to see what that number was. If it was a one, then it adds a steak to your inventory. So this function adds either steak, chicken, or pork chop to your inventory based on the randomization of one through three. So we're gonna change it from have a good time to WP give meat. So now, every time you open this, it's going to run that, and that's it. Um, there's an extra space here I don't want. Again, this is just me being picky about cleaning my code and keeping things nice. This actually can be back one. I don't 
I don't like it being forward one. Small detail, but those things to help you program. It's really important. So save that, and then we'll save that. Um, I don't think this requires anything else. I know we have our function here, which is going to randomize and fill our inventory with one kind of meat. We have the dried can of meat. It was going to be a package of meat, but um, I mean, I suppose I could add like an empty plastic item. You know what I mean? But that, that's not really going to do much. And the, the reason I have to give it the can now, because like I said, the result is going to need something. And that's it. So let's move forward into the water thing, make sure that works properly. So what I'm going to do now, cool thing about Notepad++ is you can, uh, as you see here, I got a bunch of different windows open. I keep it a little bit, I don't keep it full screen just so I can move it around and see what's going on around me. Um, but if you want, since we're doing a whole mod here, um, I can take this and drag it out and just let go. And that's gonna pull up a new window for me. And then this is the only file I have. So we have our items, we have our recipes, which are both text. We have an LUA file, which is the function. Um, and the rest of these are all like reference materials, things like that. Um, it's just me. And when you're making mods, it's gonna get a little messy. Don't get, um, don't get too, too worried about it, you know what I mean? Um, oh, you know what I just thought of? This is gonna be, well, no, this will be fine. It'll be like a pool tab can. You just need the can, you open it, you're good. Uh, let's actually find maybe the tuna and just see how that one looks. Item tuna tin open. This just lets you eat all of these. So instead of being able to eat the meat out of the can, you take it out of the can. So you have the can. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. So you open it and you get the can and then you get the meat. And then with the steaks, yeah, you do this. So adding water to a recipe. Now I know that I did this with my, um, the hard tack thing. So let's find my hard tack mod. Uh, no, nope, it was one of these, wasn't it? See, mod making is not just a quick cut and dry thing. It's a lot of issues. Um, so for release, hard tack, contents, mods, hard tack again, media, um, and then would be under scripts, I think. Yes, okay, so recipes, so we'll pull back up. Actually, both of these is fine. So in here where I have all my extra stuff, put in recipes, and there we go, water equals two. So you need two units of water, um, and then to, for this, the hard tack dough uh, requires, this is just telling you like a type of item. So this would either be wheat flour or corn flour, and then you can make the dough. But we're gonna go back over to this. So I was right, it's just water equals and then the number. So we're gonna make it take five units of water. So it's gonna be pretty resource intensive to rehydrate these meats, but it's going to give you these and it's gonna take a bit of time. We're not gonna give it any custom animation. Uh, although that would be, Kind of neat, actually. You know, let's do it. <clears throat> so I think, um, I think we'll do the animation node. Uh, disassemble is one. There are a couple of them, and I don't know most of them. I know the disassemble, and I know the uh, build low. Like I've got a, a list in my my note notepad here somewhere of the animations. Yeah, build low, saw log. Vehicle work on tire. It sounded like I didn't say the words right. Vehicle work on tire. It's hard. Um, and then the other one, uh, which actually isn't on here. I don't think. Yeah, this is like my my guide, my little help deal. Um, well, let's put that one in there because I forgot I didn't have that on there. Um, what was it? You know, first let's okay. Let's focus. Uh, oh, okay. There we go. I was like, "What's going on?" 
So cooking three, animation node disassemble. Four, rehydrate steak, rehydrate chicken, and rehydrate pork chop. Save that. Now the mod pretty much has those files. That's all we need in terms of the coding is to introduce the items and say, hey, these exist. To introduce the recipes and say, here's how to make the various things we want to make. And then the little functions and things, right? So this is pretty small. The only function we need is one to randomize this. We're, we're going to forego the function for the thing and just keep the tin can. Um, so I think that's good. I just wanted to add real quick the, because uh, this is part of it, you know, is um, the animation node of disassemble. I think I already had it on my clipboard, but whatever. There we go. And that's just, you know, another one now that I have in my list of them because there's really not like a, a place that shows all these things. I, I can always release these too. This is what I found out when you do like uh, recipe on create open candy package. And this is how I got the function because this is in the base code. Uh, and I usually I notate where I found it. But yeah, this is basically this adds uh, mint candy six times and then you get your five lollipops that's like part of it because the result you can only have one result I guess for whatever reason um, so they they made it uh, so a function runs whenever you create whenever you finish this recipe um, to where you would be given an additional six candies and that's kind of what I'm doing here is I am uh, just running a function. So really you get nothing until this function runs and then it picks a number one through three and gives you an item. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to pop open Photoshop and we're going to make our icons. So the icons are 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And we're going to start by going to the, the Project Zomboid Wikipedia. Uh, I got the Project Zomboid Wikipedia right here, PZ Wiki, right? We don't want the Wikipedia. So what we want is to go in here and we want to find the can. Uh, empty can, empty can, can opener. Empty pop can, water can. Okay, maybe the, we'll follow can opener and figure out where we're going. So this, can chili, um, canned tuna maybe is a good one. Hmm. Okay, maybe we have some a little better. Oh, here we go. There's a list of everything. Um, tuna. What's the other one? It's like roast beef, I think. Oh, here we go. Canned pickle. Gotcha. Canned dog food, potato. Canned corned beef. That's what I was thinking of. So this is, uh, it's corned beef, but it's in a can, right? So that's our icon. So what we're gonna do is we need this can right here. Um, I think it would be a good idea. Honestly, we should make a separate can item, but I, I'm not gonna worry about that because the tuna, it's, it creates the same thing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to Minimize Photoshop, minimize that. Of course, you can also always click. So here's like your notifications. If you click this little button here, it'll put away everything. Um, but we're going to drag it into here for right now. So we'll just put that there. And now we have this. We're going to open it with Photoshop. And we're essentially going to take something pretty similar to this. Now, this is a very small, like I said, 32 by 32 little thing so we're gonna turn that off and if you don't know how to use Photoshop that's fine if you don't know really much about um, about like how it all works it's it's pretty I guess it could be advanced for people that don't really know but I'm just using it as a tiny pixel editor so we're gonna just change to RGB mode that's something just sort of necessary a lot of images you pull from this website are gonna be index uh, don't worry too much about that um, grab this little icon here. This isn't a Photoshop tutorial, but I'm just going to quickly go through. So I, this is my kind of zoom in and out. Now what I want is uh, 
to make a new layer. So we're just going to go ahead and call this well, nothing. It doesn't matter. Um, we're going to reduce the opacity of this a lot, just to get kind of an idea. And then we're going to grab our, OK, I guess we're not. Grab a brush tool. And it's set to pencil, so that everything I do is going to be a, um, oh, OK, opacity 10%. Let's put that to 100. So everything I do is going to be a solid um, dot, right? If I still had the default kind of what it is and set it to one pixel, then uh, as I draw, I mean, you're going to see, you know what I mean, issues. Even if I set the flow to 100, it's going to be solid, but I'm going to have to go over a couple times to get solid lines. It's not pixel art, really. I mean, it's pixel, but it's not um, what I want. So Shift B for brush, or if you just right click this and choose Pencil Tool. So I'm going to do kind of a, I think how like a meat would be stored. I, I guess it'd be sort of like a, like a round thing. So we're going to do maybe. I don't know, something like this, and then kind of copying off of this a little bit, but we're gonna make it our own thing too. So I think that's good. Do over th over three, down two, down two, one, three, and then bring it in the rest of the way. So that's kind of my lid shape. Uh, from there, I want to go down, not that much. I want it to seem kind of chody. You know what I mean? Like. Like real thick, and then we'll do the same kind of thing here. Probably shouldn't have said that on a YouTube tutorial. It's fine, but like this will be my my canned meat item here, right? We'll center it a little bit, and then um, we'll start to color it. So we'll make a new layer. I want this to be. I want it to just be like a nice silvery type can, right? So we're gonna do uh, this. Is tons of good ways. To fill, I mean, I could just do M and then grab this and then fill with my color. So, like, yeah, there's plenty of ways to fill the area. Um, <clears throat> but these are just some ways that I do it. It's quick, it's a small pixel art thing. There's that, so we're going to do a lighter gray in the lid. Um, and then we're actually just going to do this up the brush size too, that helps. Okay. Uh, then on the side, I want it to grade a little bit. So I'm going to do just a default and I'm going to set it to 10% opacity. And then I'm going to uh, shift click that so that if I draw outside of it, it's not going to do anything. And I'm going to go um, maybe, I don't know, three pixels out like that. And then that. Then I want to cover that one, and then two, and then one. And that just gives me sort of a gradient. And then we're going to swap it to white and do the same thing. We're going to control click that icon to make it so that anywhere I draw outside of it, it won't show up, but anywhere over top it will. So we'll do kind of the same deal, but we're going to go a little bit different. Do this. Nope. And then we're going to do two pixels, I think, would be a good number. And then like that. So it just gives it a, a different kind of dimension. And then we're going to grab the brush tool and do 100% opacity. Now, that was just adding black and white. Now I'm going to use the Alt to grab this and just put the color in where I want it to be. Now, just, I've got that was just to get the right shading of gray. So get that, put that there. That looks good. And then this here. Cool. So this is a nice little shape. Um, I'm going to take this and do a little bit of this as well. This is just giving it sort of a, a highlight here. And then I guess we'll do a little shadow up here. That's too much. Do this color. And so that's just a very simple, just canned meat. I'm going to put a tab on it. So we'll just do like a little, I don't know, maybe like two things like that. It's not really going to show up all that well, just because it's, uh, you know, and we'll grab like a lighter color and just kind of grab the bottom of that since it is shading in a different, you know what I mean? Um, I want this to be moved over. So we're just going to grab it and we're going to move it this way. I think 
that's a good place for it. I literally moved the pixels out though, so I gotta put these ones back. Okay, cool. And then maybe like if I take this and put it like that, and then grab the next color down and just do that, and that would look good. Maybe. That looks good. There we go. Uh, ooh, let's do this and let's add a lighter color yet to there. Perfect. So we got ourselves a little little can. If I want, I could make a new layer above it. I could command click, oop, not this. That was all click. Command click that, or control. I'm used to doing this on a Mac, so. Now I can go back to my normal brush, expand it out a bunch, and then I can grab like, uh, like a nice blue maybe, and oop, that's too much. And uh, I could set the f flow to like 10%, get a dark blue, and then just could dot in a little bit of blue if I wanted to. Uh, nope, that was not what I meant to do at all. I don't know how many updates I made to it. Okay, control click that and then on the new layer. Okay, we're gonna just do a little bit of blue. Darker there, a little lighter there. And this just gives it a blue tint, right? And then we take the opacity down to nothing and drag it in just slightly until we get a color we like. Uh, and that's just like another added layer that we can do. I kind of like that. I think we'll keep it, but we're going to change the hue of it um, slightly. And then we're going to just lock it to that layer and maybe change it to like a, yeah, like a cyan, desaturate a little bit. So it's still, it's still there, but like it just takes it from that blue to like a, it's a canned meat. And then we'll put like a little label on it, I guess. So we'll do one more layer. Um, and we'll do like a nice uh, orange type of type of deal. Maybe desaturate it a little bit, and then we're gonna just put like I guess like this, and um, grab a brighter color. Put that, oh nope, too much. Maybe up the hue a little bit too, and then we'll put that there like that, and then grab this color drop the hue down a little bit and push it that way and then get one of those. And that way it's just got like a little little something, you know? Let me grab like another color even darker yet and, uh, and pop it in the corners here just for, just keep it nice and square. I don't know. It's not, <clears throat> not really doing a whole lot, but it's something, you know? It adds some variety to the, uh, to the whole deal. And then we'll just drop it down a square. And then I want some like blue lettering, I guess. I'll just put some like, uh, honestly, we'll just even set it to like 0.4 and just do some faded, like, yeah. Now it's just like a little can of meat. That's, that's all it is. It's just, yeah, you know, um, we're going to get rid of the back layer. And this is our, this is our finished product. So we're going to go ahead and save this as, um, and dry meat .psd. This way we've got a file saved. We can always go in, make edits however we want. And then we're going to save a copy as a PNG. And remember what I said, we're going to set it to WP, um, what was it? Because this is an icon. So it's gonna be WP dried meat can. Now, when you're saving items, what you have to do is you have to do capital I, T-E-M, underscore, and then the rest of it. And that's the only time you have to do that, is just for items, you have to put item, underscore, with capital I, and then your item name. You don't, yes, you don't want to put it um, here. You don't want to make this say item, because when it sees that it's an item, it's already going to place this bit of code in when it tries to find the icon. So just keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> so that, and then we have the dried steak, chicken, and pork chop. So we're going to head back to here, and we're going to look for, we're just going to type in meat. No, we don't need to do that, because remember, we got this down here. So we're going to do, um, was it meat? Okay, so pork chop, beef, no, chicken, and steak. So all we're doing now is we're going to grab the textures for the 
cooked ones. I guess raw. We'll do raw. So I'm gonna take the um, the raw pork chop, and we're gonna drive that texture down here. We'll grab the raw chicken and grab that texture, and then we're gonna take the steak and grab that texture. And now what I'm gonna do is in Photoshop, I'm going to take the three textures here and drag them. It can be the same file. It doesn't have to be something new. But those are the, so we'll take these. Actually, we're gonna, boom. Move that up a little bit. I'm gonna grab all of this, create a new layer, and just call that our um, canned meats. Now for these, honestly, all three of them can probably have the same type of textures applied. So what we're gonna do, if you're gonna freeze a meat, it's going to do a couple things to it. So one, it's going to add a lot of blue, kind of an icy, chill, gross thing in the red. We're gonna take some red out of it because it's just a pale, dry meat. Um, green, I think maybe if we push a little bit of green, uh, take me a little, no, we're not gonna mess with the green. That one's not important. But the blue, we definitely want. And we're gonna drag it into the lower tones as well. Now we're gonna take the overall color and we're going to mute it a little bit. So I'm gonna do that and uh, maybe add a little bit of contrast by pushing that down and then pushing this up. And that's just gonna make it, uh, actually we know we don't really want any of these. So we're gonna pull this down. So now it just looks like a proper piece of dried meat. Only other thing I need to do now is uh, take the saturation out of it. So we're gonna make it a less saturated. And now we have a nice dried piece of meat. Now that can apply to all three things, right? See, it's very good. I think the steak might use a little bit of red reduction, but yeah, that's fine. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and save a copy. And remember, we want it to be item underscore uh, WP dried chicken. Was that it? Because again, remember, we are not you. We are going off of the icons here. So WP dried steak, dried chicken, and dried pork chop with a lowercase c. So WP dried chicken, save as PNG, save. And even a small mod like this, all of these are absolutely necessary steps. So I'll click this to make it easy. I'll just click this and change the word chicken to pork chop with a lowercase c or else it will not work properly. And then last one, we're gonna go ahead and save. If I change it to a PNG, they show up. Let's me click it, change the word chicken to steak, save. So we are set on our textures. We'll save that. It's a little bit lazy just to do all three the same. I mean, I could probably take some of the red out of here uh, and you know, like I could do maybe uh, what is a channel mixer, I think. And then I could take the reds and um, pull those down a lot, give myself some cyan, but yeah, it's not really necessary. I'm not gonna worry about it. We'll save that, minimize it, we're good. We got our, our frozen meats. If we look here at the textures, I mean, you can tell that these are frozen versions of the meats, the freeze dried, just kind of crappy, gray, ugly meats. Actually, I could have made them a little more monochrome, I think, but it's fine. For right now, we'll work with this. If I want to change it in the future, I will. Um, but that's it, we got our textures now. Um, so since we have everything in here, like the, the little textures and the PSD, we don't really want those files in the mod with us. So we're going to put them elsewhere for right now. Now I have a special folder set aside, which is, um, let's see, I think it's in here. Um, yeah, so in my PZ mods, I have like a texture art folder. And here's where I, I put all of my stuff that I make. So I'm gonna grab this and these. And I, you know, let's take everything and we're gonna move it here. But I'm gonna take those three dry, these things and we're gonna copy it here. Um, if you're moving something back and forth, if it's in a different drive, it will give you the option to copy. If it's in the same one, it'll give you the option to move. If you hold shift 
on the other drive, it'll change it from copy to move. If you hold Alt, it'll change it to create a link. That's how I made the links here. So I just found the folder and I created the link there. Really recommend that. Um, but I've got these. So this is pretty much all the files that I need. So we're going to throw this together now. The best way, like I said, is to go into a mod that already exists and look at how it's set up. I think there are different like ways to do that. And an important note is that the mods that you put in the Zomboid folder to test, like these are my test mods. These are not live. These don't exist anywhere but my computer. They go in to your name, Zomboid mods. The actual mods that you want to put in the workshop go into workshop and they have a different structure. So we're going to go with that for right now. And then I'll show you how to adapt it to the mods folder. Um, what you want to do is take your folder. So this is WP Drive Meets. This is WP, we'll say hardtack. A couple other files we need. We need a preview file. Um, for right now, we're going to, eh, you know, let's make a new one. Why not? Uh, it's we'll copy this and we'll paste it in here. And then we'll copy the workshop text and paste it. Now the workshop for the Drive Meets is going to say W Patrick's Drive Meets. So we're going to get rid of this. And we're going to get rid of the description, text, tags, and the visibility. It's going to fill all that in for us. So meets, oh, it doesn't matter, right? Just save that. That's fine. Um, we're going to need the preview to be changed. Now, I have a file, like I said, already in my texture art that is for my posters. So all we have to do is make a new one of these. We'll go ahead and do that now. This is, you know, let's put this in the folder, make it look clean. That way I can turn that off. And I've got like the nudie mags and the hard tack and all the other things I made. So we're gonna do, um, I don't actually need this, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're just gonna grab our dried meats textures, drag them on here. And then we're going to grab all four of those. We're going to transform them to be 200% to nearest neighbor. Select. Nope, that didn't work. OK, hold on. Oh, because they're smart objects. Duh. Rasterize them. Now, OK. See, I had it right the first time. Just cut that part of the video out, make myself look less stupid. There we go. Now you can see. So um, we got our dried steak, pork chop, and chicken, set it up like a Powerpuff Girls thing, right? It'll look nice. And then we'll duplicate this. Do one like that a little bit. And no, that doesn't look good. Well, it doesn't have to look good, I don't care. There we go. And like that. And then we'll drag the meats in a little bit. Cool. So we got the steak, pork chop, and the chicken here. Nope, don't want that. Drag those above that so I can separate them and move them just kind of wherever I want. Cool. Now we got all five aligned to the center. There we go. This looks good there. And we'll add another layer like this. So we'll drag that one up and out. Nope, that's not what I want that and we'll call it dried meats and we'll give it a nice blue color I think that looks good uh, you know what why don't we do this we'll grab it we'll do a gradient overlay and we'll make it uh, that foxy blue oh, no, hold on come on blue to white. Okay, and then we'll change the angle just a little bit. So it's like, uh, like that. Okay, and then the scale, pull it in a little bit. So we get that. Cool. Okay. That looks good. Now it's got a little white to blue, this dried meat. So I think that looks good. So um, so we have that. So we're going to save this as, what was it, preview as a PNG. 
I'm going to save it to the desktop under my drive meets folder. So save that in there. Cool. Save the overall file. So I've got all my work saved. And here we go. Now let's continue. So within the mod folder, we're going to need a new folder called contents. Everything about your mod goes in here other than the preview and the workshop file. So let's drag the icons in there and those files. Cool. In contents, there's a folder called mods. Just going to do the new folder uh, hotkey, which is shift control N and call it mods. Grab everything but this, drag it in there. Cool. In there, we have once again, the name of the mod. So we're going to go up here and up one, no, come on. Up a level, let's go. Desktop, right. Okay, and we're gonna grab this, F2, copy the folder name, jump in. It doesn't have to be that exact, but I'm meticulous. So, in there, here we go. Now I'm gonna need a new folder called Media. Okay, uh, put everything in there because this is it. It looks weird to have the name of the mod, then contents, mods, and then the mod again, but that's just the way that Steam needs it done, and that's the way we're gonna do it to get it released. This, inside of the mods folder, the version of your folder that has everything in it, this is what goes in the mods folder in um, the actual like games thing, like right here. Uh, no, not here, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, under your, here. <laughs> New habit somewhere. So in here is where this would go because it mods, mods, right? But if you're gonna go into the workshop and add stuff, um, it's gonna have to be this version right here where it's it's got the contents preview workshop. So just keep that in mind. That's It can be a little confusing, but that's because it is. Um, but okay, so we have now contents, mods, and then the name of our mod. So here is media, and we have mod.info, poster preview and I have a readme this is not necessary I don't know if you need one the other both so what I like to do is just put both so I got the preview we're gonna copy it I'm gonna jump in here and we're gonna paste it I'm gonna paste it a second time uh, I'm actually gonna skip it so we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it so we have the word copy and we change it from preview to poster I don't know which one's right I don't care but you got both it's like a kilobyte, you'll be fine. And then with this, this is the mod.info. Now this is a file that is opened with here. So um, I forgot I moved those into these subfolders so they no longer exist in here. So we're going to drag this in there, copy everything, new file, paste, and we're going to save it as mod.info inside of desktop. We're going to navigate there, okay, right here mod.info save. Now, instead of hard tack, since like I said, we're gonna just change the info. You can also see this, copy it, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna do dried meats. WP dried meats. I just keep things very simple. Adds dried meats that can be found and rehydrated. Now there's one other file that I forgot that we do need to make. Um, the rest of this information is pretty, pretty standard. Poster is going to be poster.png mod version, whatever. So save that. And now I've got that right here. This we didn't really need. We don't mess with that. And the last one's the procedural distribution. That's actually going to take some time. So we'll get everything put where it needs to go first, just to make sure that the mod works, and then we'll do the procedural distribution. We're going to do a test first. So um, we have the icons that need to go in the media folder. We have the work files that need to go in the media folder, but the mod info, poster, and preview stay here. I like to have a readme just to say, hey, whatever, this is this is your video, or uh, this is your mod. You know, this is like in, in this one, the hard tack, just hello, I'm W. Patrick. Moves on to explain the mod, the new items it adds, all the things that I planned features. Most of the stuff you're going to see in my Steam description anyway. We're going to hop into the media, and now you see it's split up by Lua scripts and textures. So first of all, we're going to need a new folder called textures, and we're going to put our textures in it. That's done. And here, you got the softened hard tack, right? So that's that's good. Now we've got these text files, which are going to go in scripts. 
So scripts, drag the text in there, and that's that. Scripts are just text files, typically, that have, like I said, items and recipes, things that the game doesn't really need specific, you know, syntax. It's not like code, it's just objects, little items that it's going to add to the game or, or features like a recipe. The Lua is where we're going to add things like the recipe function. So create a folder. Nope, guess not. Create a folder called Lua. Drag that in there. Within the Lua folder, I don't know why, but it needs to be called server. And inside of server, I have the recipe codes. Now here is where um, you would do the distributions. So we're going to leave that out for right now, but keep in mind that's going to be the next thing we have to do. Because like I said, I want to be able to find these in kitchens and, and uh, other kitchens, like, you know, uh, the, what do you call it, like uh, restaurant kitchens or um, home kitchens. I want to be able to find it in like plank stashes, things like that. So, but other than that, this should be done and ready to go. So we're going to hop into Steam. I would normally just click on Project Zomboy, but I want to Go to properties and type dash debug. That is going to allow us, just closing it out is fine. That's going to allow us to load the mod up and, oh, I got to put the mod in a folder and actually make it something it can read. So we're going to go up to here, contents, mods, and this is our folder. So we're going to test by using just this, not the overall folder that contains contents and mods, but just this. So, we're the workshop. We don't want the workshop. We want mods. And we're going to just uh, control click or control move, which is copy. Shift is move, control is copy, alt is create a shortcut. So we want that as a copy. So this, if we do anything to this, we need to refer, like, we need to change it in here before we play the game. Uh, if we move anything in here, this is meant to be deleted and then drag it back in. Delete, edit, drag it back in. That's kind of the process. But this should show that in there. Don't judge my 966 hours. <laughs> I like this game. But um, when you type in the dash debug, that kind of puts you in cheat mode. This, you have like all these little things here. I don't, don't worry about all that. All we're gonna do is create a solo world and choose the mods. I have skill literature is one of my mods that I have automatically pulling up here, but we're not gonna want that there. So turn that off. Now I should see right here, dried meats. And it's got my little picture. Uh, it says dried meats, adds dried meats that can be found and rehydrated. I just typed that into the mod.info, that's where this goes, okay? I'm gonna turn that on and hit accept. Now the only mods I have are the mod manager and the dried meats. Simple enough. From there, it doesn't matter what we do, it's gonna reload the LUA up at the corner here, so don't expect to be able to move anything, just wait for it to like flash, it'll flash a little bit here. There. Uh, this doesn't matter what we're doing. We'll do Builder for right now just to keep zombies from attacking me. I'm most used to Rosewood just because, you know, whatever. It does not matter. We'll just do, yeah, Random, Hiker, cool. Random will be Ernestine Cairns, sure. All I'm doing this for is so that I can make sure that the items show up properly. In, like, as far as the icons, I'm going to make sure that it's, um, it shows up in the world. The game registers it as a usable item. And then I wanna check the recipes and make sure that you can create what I've what I've made. So we're gonna see if that all works as intended. <clears throat> if it does, I will be amazed because I never just code something out and then it works. Like that doesn't happen to me, so. <laughs> we're gonna see. <laughs> okay. You can, I don't, I don't want you, okay, shh. All right, water bottle I need. The rest of this is just wasting my time here. So we're not gonna find any of the dried meats in the world. So what we have to do is click on the little bug, click on items, and one of the big reasons I name everything WP, this and that, is so I can just type WP and there's everything of mine. Now I don't see any icons, but I can see the category for the meat can is normal and for everything else is food which is good. So we're gonna start with the meat can. And we're actually gonna add a couple of those to my inventory now, let's see. Ah, there we go, so we got a little icon there, dried meat can. I think I could refine it just a tiny bit, change the outline from black to make it maybe like uh, something else. It just looks a little, a little dry. Anyway, right-clicking that, open canned meat. 
So to receive a can and this, I should get one of my assigned dried meats, we'll see. I might have actually messed up the coating. It could be, it, I think it's gonna give me the actual raw meat now that I think about it. We'll see. Ah, pork chop, okay. Do that, another pork chop. Another one, steak. Another one, another steak. Another one, another steak. We'll just do them all. Chicken, another steak. Very good, okay, so it's giving me the cans. Circumference of point two. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? And these are point three. So a total of 0.5, but I have it giving me an encumbrance of 0.15. So, because that was kind of more when it was a plastic baggie. So let's, oh no, because these get rehydrated. So these are going to be, let's fix that. The first thing we know that is wrong with the coating. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, you know what? I don't think it's going to show my desktop. So let's quit. So the first thing we know is wrong with the mod. So we're going to open this and we're going to hop in to our, um, our Lua in the server, because that is our function, right? That's what's telling it to give us the, the randomized things. And then we need to pop back up into the scripts and the items. Reason being, like I said, it's giving me the wrong items. So I need the dried steak, dried chicken, and dried pork chops to show up when I open the cans. That was my bad. So dried steak, chicken. Nope, what did I do? Should I say, uh, no, well, I don't, didn't know that was a thing. Um, and there we go. So steak, chicken, pork chop. Now it's gonna give me the dried versions. I believe base should be fine. If it's not, I'm just gonna have to go in and change it to something else. I don't I don't know that this really has, I, I don't know what that does. I'll be honest. Somebody knows, tell me. Um, you know, cause I, I think modding should be very collaborative. We should learn from each other. I think it's really cool. So the meats after cooking them is 0.3. So these will have an encumbrance of 0.1. You add the water and that rehydrates it to give you the, the full food. So that being said, this should be more because if the can's 0.2, we're gonna make this 0.2, uh, 0.3, All right? That's the can plus the thing. So that's fine. So we'll save those. And I think that was the only thing that was actually wrong with it. So I'll close out of those. I didn't need to, but I did, I don't care. Um, and I wanna make sure it's still recording. It is, cool. So we'll hop back in. <clears throat> Looks like it all it worked just fine. But now we know. You'll be doing a lot of closing the game, reopening it, testing, closing it, reopening it again, testing. It, it, that's gonna be a constant thing. So don't ever think that it won't be. Yeah, like I think I do want to make a world texture for the canned meat and I want to make it larger. I don't know how to do that. So we're just going to continue. That's going to bring me to that, that world. But here we go. So we're going to take these and with my magical powers, just delete them. Go back in my items list, WP and give myself a bunch of the meat cans. So 15 of those. Now they have an encumbrance of 0.15. I just changed that, didn't I? You know what I forgot to do? Here's a fun modding thing. And this will happen to almost everyone at least once. And it's hilarious. All right, let's do one thing. So I'm just gonna load it back up and restart, or re return the recording so you don't have to wait for one more time. But what I forgot to do after I updated the items. I didn't drag it over, so we're gonna delete that and drag that over. Remember to control drag. Perfect. So this should work. All right, so now that I've updated the files, these should be, there we go, encumbrance, 0.3. So they're a little bit heavy, just to keep it a little more balanced, but now opening one of them should give me my frozen meats with the frozen meat texture, let's see. It didn't. Okay, error, Contain item container, add item, can't find base.wp drive pork chop. Like I said, base might be the issue. 
I think I'm gonna have to change it to something. I still got the tin can. <laughs> I just lost the meat, I guess. Um, we'll do a few more and just see if, if that's really, if that's still giving me the, no, wait, freeze dried chicken. You know what? I bet it's that C. Um, let's open, let's keep opening them. It always helps to check. So pork chop again, chicken again, pork chop, pork chop, chicken, steak. Okay. So steak and the chicken work fine. They're dangerous uncooked. They give me some hunger, but they're really bad. They don't say fresh because they're not going to get bad. But we do have this, so we can use five units of water. So we'll do this to see how much that is um, and rehydrate one of these. And that's going to take a little bit of time. Maybe I should make it take a little longer. And look at that. It takes a lot of water, but you get fresh chicken. And then rehydrate. We'll try the steak. So that's cool. Nice. We got fresh uncooked steak and fresh uncooked chicken. Some tin cans. Um, yeah, that uses so uh, 10 units as a bottle of water. Learn that just now. It's good. Uh, and let's eat one of these. See what happens. That's horrible. And it's, yeah, it's <laughs> from chicken leg. Yeah, it made me thirsty, like dehydrated immediately. It's great. Um, because it, it, it gives you plus 18 thirst, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, the only thing we have to do is fix the pork chop, and I'm pretty sure it's just because of the capital C, but let's take a look. So open this back up, and that was the Lua, that was the function that was having an issue because it didn't understand what this was, WP dried pork chop. So let's go back to my scripts, where my items are. It's like, what is that item? Drive pork chop. There it is. That's the item name. This is the icon name. See, capital C. That that's exactly it. That was it. That's the only thing. Um, and now that I've made those updates, we're going to. Uh, I have it closed, right? Yes. Okay. So we're going to delete the dried meats. Go back up here, and we're going to control, hold control, and then let go. It's going to copy it. And I think that is WB Drive Pork Chop with the lowercase c. Just double check, make sure that is correct before I move forward. Pork Chop lowercase c. See, told you I emphasized that, didn't I? I said that was important. Uh, nope, not you. I knew, I knew that would be a problem. Okay, continue, and now it should be fine. Okay, the only issue was that opening these didn't give me the right thing. So the chicken and the steak, they worked. So let's just open the rest of these and see if we can get the pork chop, huh? Ah, got the pork chop, got the steak, got the chicken. And these don't go bad, they're freeze dried, so they're, they're cool. Now, placing them, I get these, right? So let's, uh, you, could, you could leave it like that and that's fine. I think that's pretty poor mod making. You know what I mean? Just leaving it like that. So what I want to do is I want to get my bluish hue to these textures as well. The, the bluish hue and the desaturated. I think that would look really nice. Um, because you can't distinguish it from actual chicken other than just, you know, it being different here. Uh, it, would, it would look fine like this, but I'll show you how you can edit the physical textures without having to go in and, and create new 3D textures or anything. It's just, there's a file, you just update the color and then you'll, it'll be fine. This, um, I don't really show up like that yet. They don't have a world static thing, but I kind of want to take the same texture as the, well, let's see, it's tuna and then the corned beef. Okay, yeah, they're, they're pretty unoriginal. Honestly, this is about the size I would expect anyway. It's not, not a very good 3D model, but it's fine. Maybe we'll see if we can mess with the tuna can and make it bigger and whatever, but I think for right now, we'll just kind of borrow the texture from the, from that. The, um, let's actually, let's see. 
Some canned foods. So maybe we can find something else. Uh, canned evaporated milk. Spaghetti bolognese. Sardines. Um, evaporated. No, that's the same thing. I already have that. Um, yeah, let's drop these and see what they look like. I thought this was bigger. Am I am I tripping? No, that's, that's just a can of Campbell's soup. There was one that I swear was like a big can. It's not this, is it? Ah, no, it's a mayonnaise jar. Um, we'll figure it out. But basically, yeah. So it it works now. We have exactly what we need and it's going to give us junk it's going to give us tin cans but we have we're Arby's now we have the meats okay so give yourself 15 more of those and the water bottles <coughs> and we'll just retest everything it should work just fine but as a modder it never hurts to double tests and triple tests so we're going to walk over here we're going to open all 17 cans of meat. Cool. 15. Did I say 17? I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm sick because I ate the gross meat. <laughs> Great. Um, but I got the, some chicken, some pork chops, and some steaks. And we're going to go ahead and rehydrate this chicken. Rehydrate steak. And pork chop doesn't want to work. See, helps to test everything. I could have said mod's done and put it up online. It wouldn't work. So freeze dried pork chop. That one's not working. Why doesn't that one work? Rehydrate chicken, rehydrate steak. Well, let's find out. Okay. So that is a recipe, which is in my scripts, recipes. Rehydrate steak, chicken, rehydrate pork chop. Dried pork, oh, because it needs this item. Result pork chop, that was it. I bet you anything that was the exact issue is that lowercase c. Once again, that's caused me an issue because I think when I copied it from the items, yeah, I copied the icon instead of the name. Because see that it, it highlights both because it understands that there it doesn't it's not case sensitive when you highlight it. So I just highlighted that and I was like, that's good. But now that I save this, and then you can leave this open, like I said, go into mods, delete that, control move, we're gonna see if it works. I mean, it's gonna work, but we'll, we'll watch it work. And I know it, it seems really boring and lame to have to close it, reopen it, wait all that time. It, it takes about a full minute. And I'm pretty sure you can't just like refresh things. Like in Minecraft, you can, I know I was doing mods for Minecraft, you can refresh it and it's not the same. For this, you can just, uh, like, you can't just, you know, click slash reload and everything updates and you've got new changes, I don't think. If you can, please tell me because this is, this is a grueling process. <laughs> okay, character's sick and dying, that's fine, so right click on the pork chop, rehydrate pork chop, look at that. So I can now rehydrate all three of my meats. Like I said, I kind of wanted to take a little bit longer than that, uh, not terribly longer, but like, it's, I think, 250. I think maybe I'm going to set it to uh, like 400. Just make it take a little bit longer for the meat to actually you know, rehydrate into into good, decent, cookable meats. Um, and then only the thing from there is I have to make it so you can find it in the world, which is not quite as difficult, I guess. Oh no. Oh no. I'm going to burn my, my chicken. I don't want to burn it. Burn, burn all my meats. Cool. See now I got, now I got fresh, cooked meat from an empty can package. Disgusting. Cool. Don't care about that. Which cans littering in here? It doesn't matter. It's my house. Um, and then we'll just we'll eat all of this. Cause look at that. We got delicious hunger. Terrific. My character's very sick. I should probably drink some water. Oh, you know what else I can do? Is I can give myself lemongrass. Get myself a bunch of it. Just eat it all. 
There we go. Get rid of my sickness. I'm bored though. Let's go out and get mauled by the undead. That's cool. Anyway, the, that's it. The mod works um, to, at the very least, uh, turn the items from a can into the dried variants, and then it allows me to rehydrate them. So all I gotta do now is add the called procedural distributions, and that'll be that'll be that. So I'll go ahead and um, close out of here, and we'll have to I don't know, have to make a new world, but um, we'll add those and we'll test it. I'm gonna do a new like video file. So all right, so we've got our items; they work. There are still a few other things I wanted to do. The first thing I wanted to do is going to be the easiest thing. I wanted to update the time it takes to about 400. So we're just going to make these say 400 instead of 250. Just lengthen the amount of time it takes for the meat to rehydrate, kind of balance things a little bit. The next thing is um, I want to go back into here into where I have my items underscore food. And I want to go back to steak. And world static model is steak. So I think in my items, I have that world static model. Yes, I have chicken, pork chop and steak. I'm going to do the WP drive versions of those. And that's going to be its own thing. I'll show you how that all works. I want to make those uh, different. And then here, dried meat can. What did I say was a good one? Um, just the corned beef. Here we go. World static model. Can closed corn beef static model can closed. I just need the world one. So we'll paste that in there. Now, if I want to make these visible, I'm going to do. I'm wondering. No, these actually have to stay as. No. Hold on. So this is another thing. Sometimes I forget and I have to go and reference things. Now I know that I changed for the origami mods that I did. So we're going to check in my D drive, PZ mods for release nudie mags, contents mods. Here we go. Okay. So scripts I have models so we're gonna open that I'm gonna see what I got and I want to make a new file for that too so I'm gonna grab the models and open that in here and cool so we have the module base we're just gonna copy all of this that's a lot of its copy and paste welcome to programming so I have the WP magazine hunks ground so in the nudie mags media scripts items world static model WP magazine jugs ground magazine hunks okay so that's cool so I get the mesh the texture and the scale the scale is what I think is going to be really really useful actually let's do okay let's do the tuna can then so I'm going to do so what I want to do is get the mesh of the tuna can I want to get my own texture and then I want to get a larger scale. We'll test all that out. So cool. So we only need the textures for four items. So we have three out of here. I'll need those. Okay, and we're gonna do WP um, dried meat can. Okay. Then, so these say ground underscore ground as the model, and these say underscore ground. So that's just consistent. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> I think, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to set underscore ground at the bottom just because 
I don't want it to be the exact same as the icon name. I don't think it's going to cause any issues. But just to be safe, we're going to set it to ground. Just that way, there's, there's no question. Okay. So sy syntactically, the world static model is going to be the same thing here as it is, move that away, right here. Or this, the model. So this world static model is going to align to model. So we get the dried meat can ground, steak ground, chicken ground, and pork chop ground. Now, what I need to do next is figure out the mesh. The mesh is like the actual 3D item itself. It's just, you know, it's all the little points and vertices and and faces and everything it looks like. Like in this case, magazine mesh is going to be like the magazine. So I have to figure out what the meshes are in the models. So we're going to go back to my reference files, the default files, and see if I have models item. Here we go. So this is actually nothing, is it? No, this just shows. OK, yeah, it's, it's, so I want the tuna can, tinned tuna ground. So, tin, so the mesh is world items underscore tinned tuna. And I want that to be the mesh for the meat. I want it to be big, though. So instead of 0.04, I want it to be 0.08. I want to double the size of it. And then in here, I'm going to do the model. I'm going to do the same name here. See what I'm doing? So the model and the this is the file name. They're going to be the same. Cool, cool. We're going to save it as. Oh goodness, what am I saving it as? It's WP Nudie Mags models. So we're going to save it to desktop in the dried meats contents mods dried meats media and scripts where my other text files are. We're going to save it as. WP dried meats underscore models. Just very simple, just cut and cut and dry. That's all. The only thing I have to do now is um, find the steak, like the, the meshes for those. So in here where we have what was it? Um, oh models, let's move this over here. So we're going to use find to find the steak. So it seems like you could just type steak, but I want to be sure. So I'm going to check each of them. World item steak. The next thing I want is um, steak. Uh, was it pork? Pork chop, which is, again, capital C, because why would anything be the same? Should have been chicken next. It's fine, we'll do chicken, and chicken is chicken. Chicken is chicken, who knew? Cool, so we have that, and we will save that, save this. Only thing missing now are the actual textures, which, again, is going to be pretty easy. So all I'm gonna have to do now is, and this is where I'm gonna go back into the actual, um, into the files. So we're gonna hop into the media folder, this is something you don't want to do, like touch anything, right? So items, no, we want um, textures, okay. And then here we're looking for the meats. We're looking for chicken, maybe it's somewhere else, world items, I think. Yep, this is it. So we're looking for chicken. And pork chop and steak. Oh, I can just type. Uh -huh. Stupid. Chicken, 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 chicken. It's gonna be raw chicken. There we go. Chicken raw. Copy that, and I'm gonna go into our folder, textures, and paste it. Don't worry about the name. We'll fix it. Chicken raw. We want pork chop. Uh, guess this is raw. Oh no. I. Hit paste instead. No, pork chop. There we go. 
copy, paste. And then we want the steak, which we want that one. So copy and paste. Now all we have to do is go into our Photoshop file where we have these. And guess what? We're going to drag these right in here, which is not the right thing to do, actually. No, cancel. OK. So we're going to make a new, new thing. We're going to open a new file because, look, notice this is 64 by 64. I just tried to drag it into the wrong thing. So there's that, and there's this. These are all 64 pixel files. So we're going to copy that and paste it there, copy that and paste it there. Now the chicken has all three, OK? And we're going to close pork chop and steak. So we get all three things in the same thing. I want to replicate these. So this was a hue at negative 52 saturation and this curves. So we're going to hold Alt and click and drag this into there. I think that's going to work. I, that did not work. Yes, it did. OK, cool. And then what was it? I think hue saturation minus 52. Cool, and now we have the kind of dried versions of those. So let's save this one as, what was this, pork chop? Yeah, so save as a PNG, which would be, um, I believe, just WP dried pork capital chop. We'll make sure. Save this one as WP dried steak. Convert to a PNG. It always asks this, like what file size. I just always hit large. It doesn't matter, really, honestly. And then we'll save this as WP dried chicken. Save as PNG. We're set. Now we don't need these files anymore. Just get rid of them. It's not like we can't find them again. You know, uh, so I will keep it open too. I'm not going to save it. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just we're just applying the same filters that are already on there. Um, I'll minimize that again because we might need to re refer back to it. But uh, we've got these now. Now, mind you, the names of them correlate with this. So actually, I might want to put the underscore ground. So copy that. F2 right arrow paste. F2 right arrow paste, F2 right arrow paste. Cool. So now we've got those. Um, I'm pretty certain that is all I need, except I might need the world items folder to be. Yeah. OK, so we're going to do that. We're going to copy this folder name, make a new one here, paste. In here, nothing is really named um, with a prefix like the item. So we're just going to drag these into there. So that's just become part of our structure, our file file structure. Um, with that, I think I just need the tuna can. Oh goodness, C A for canned tuna, can sardine, can of oats, carb batter, can juice. Do I not have tuna? Oh goodness. Hmm. Tinned tuna. Perfect. OK, copy this and we'll paste it here. Uh, and then we will pop this bad boy open in Photoshop once again, because here's like the side of it, right? And then there's like the top and the bottom. Um, I think tin can empty. I think this part of the texture only applies. Like, it's this until it's opened, and then it's this. Like, they recycle the same texture file. I'm gonna guess. I don't know. We'll find out. So, here we're going to not worry about the bottom half, but we want to change this. And then we've got this file here. So, let's grab uh, these pixels. We'll copy it, paste it here, turn it sideways. 
and then we'll uh, commit that change. Then, I don't know, we're going to grab the marquee tool. We're going to move these down just a little bit and then move this down just a little bit more to align the gradients that I have. We're going to delete this and this and we're going to grab the whole thing, put it there. We're going to duplicate in case we mess it up. Now T and just drag it over top. There we go. That should be my canned meat texture. Good enough. <laughs> really, it doesn't have to be that perfect because it's not going to be a huge thing. We'll do WP uh, dried meat ground, I think is what I named it. PNG, put it in world items, save. I think we're done with that. This we don't need anymore. But I have dried meat can. So that is named wrong. Can underscore ground. And it's going to be larger, so it's going to be much bigger. But the mesh is going to be like a tinned tuna. Um, then the meshes of steak, chicken, and pork chops. So that's one thing we're going to test to make sure. The next thing we're going to test is to make sure that the recipes, that it's taking the adequate amount of time, which should be 400 now. And then the last thing we're going to do is uh, is the procedural distributions, and that, like I said, is is going to be a pretty big challenge. Now, I happen to have um, a special file. It's a list of testing, maybe. Yes, I have a list of the procedural distribution places, and this is everything like all the names of the places. This is just something I, I went into Excel and I, I copied the, I'll, you know, I'll do it, why not? It doesn't matter, it's not taking a whole lot of extra time. This is something you can do, right? So when you go into the actual media folder for Project Zomboid and you go into scripts, I believe, no, Lua. Lua, server, items, and then here. So here's where you would find all the procedural distribution files. Procedural distributions is what's going to make our items appear in various places around the world. So um, you want to copy and open that file, which I have already done that. I'm going to go to my copy of it just to make sure that I don't screw anything up. So that would be in my reference, default files, and here's procedural distribution. So we're going to open that here, and you notice that it's all these different things, right? You get this, you have antiques, and then all this stuff, all the little things that are in it, and then like junk rolls, all these little lines. But like this is the piece of code that we need, and then this, and then this. Copying every single one of these, we're down to, you know, almost 20,000 lines of code. So we're going to copy that, and we're going to pop open Excel. Here's where this program is underutilized. So we're going to paste the data in here. Okay. And then we're going to uh this header, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do this. Now what we'll do is we'll sort A to Z. It'll take a minute. Okay, it's not gonna do anything. So we are going to do one, two, three, four and then highlight these. And then we're gonna take this, a little square there, and see how it's six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna drag it all the way down. And anyone can do it. So all we're doing is we're dragging out data to the end of this data set, which is right here. Now I've got a number in every single one of these columns. So I'm gonna to go to the top. And I do, I'll say ID, right? Now I can turn off the filter and turn it back on, which is just Control Shift L. And now you notice it didn't do anything. But now, if I uh, sort it A to Z, you notice these pop up, right? So we have this. I'm going to scroll down and all the blank layers. Okay, we'll just keep scrolling and scrolling until we find the end of the blanks. Here we go, end of the blanks right here. And we will control minus, get rid of them. And then we grab all of these. This starts with the quotation. This is all just the names of the items. We don't need any of this. 
So scroll all the way down to the end as to U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Cool. So here goes down to Y and Z. Grab all that, cut it out. We don't need that. Then we have this, which is all of the close brackets. We'll see where that, that ends here. We get the items. We don't need that either. Keep scrolling. Um, you'll see me pass over roles and another close bracket because it's alphabetical, right? Items again, junk, roles. We want to get down to where we start seeing this. Okay. Scroll up a little bit. There we go. So now here we are. We don't need any of this. So we'll close out of that. Now we're seeing all of this. Okay. And these are all the different. Um, different locations stops about here so we'll grab this swing to the end of the data set and I think these are just tabs or something I don't know but it's it's just unnecessary lines from the code that we're going to close out and now I went from 20,000 lines of code to 721 only other issue is that I have the equals and this thing so we're going to make another column and find it's fine. We're going to do um, I forget what it is. I think it's uh, equals right. Um, maybe maybe I'd, maybe we can just do this. Antiques army hanger outfit. And there we go. Hit enter. It knows what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to clear out the little bit here. But now look at that. We have the name of everything. Perfectly. So we can pretty much just get rid of this. Now you notice under the C's, I think I had um, one that was like weird. Yeah, we don't need this one clothing store. It's not important. But now we have a generated list of every single item or every single location in the entire game. And these are just the different places. Now what I want to do is uh, I built another Excel sheet for myself that I can use. Uh, which is here. So this is my skill literature procedural distribution. So what this is, this is a file that uh, has all of the different categories of skill literature and then I just put ones, twos, and threes. But basically on the side is location and then here's where I want those things to show up. So from there I have this. This is built. So this is table.insert. This is some code that needs to go in there and then I would figure out everywhere that I want. For instance, um, my cooking, I have three different levels of literature. So I do everything that wants that has level one in it and then it would be all of these places. So I would copy this, paste it in here, and then um, that would be like all the different places. And this sort of pre-generates the copy result or the end code that I need to put in there. So that being said, it's not gonna be that involved. All we're doing right now is figuring out where I want to find my, uh, my canned meats. So we're just gonna go through I'll probably fast forward this part a little bit, but um, army surplus miscellaneous. So I want it to be here. We're also going to do this. Um, since I have something in here, so I'll change this to location. And um, we'll change this to, uh, I don't know, dried meat. Tools. We're just putting an X anywhere that I want it to show up. A bakery. It's not really going to be in a bakery. Break from shelves. We want it to appear there once in a while. Just it's it's possible to show up in a break room to have some canned dried meats. It won't be very likely, but it'll be possible. Yeah, so this is the process. It's boring. I'm going to cut the recording here, figure it out myself, and then show you when I've decided. Okay, so. I went through the sort of grueling process of deciding where I want these things to show up. So we are anywhere I did, I just put an X in this column and we're going to 
uh, get rid of the blanks and have only the X's. So these are the places that I felt you would be able to find canned meats, uh, dried, freeze-dried meats, right? Uh, to me, all of these places seem like they, they would have that item there, maybe. Uh, some of them might meet Trapper Hunter. I am not certain what those allude to, but whatever. We'll put it in there. If it's bad, we we'll can remove it later. Um, but this right here, this this is important. right? So we're going to copy this, and we're going to paste it here, I guess. It's fine. It's just that list. Short list. It's only 46 different items. So 46 different places. Now, to actually go in and do the procedural generation code, let me show you kind of what that looks like. like this is, I mean, there's 20,000 lines of code. We're not going to worry about all that. But I want to show you in a different mod of mine. We'll open, um, so we don't need that. This gets messy, so just bear with me. Uh, we don't need that. Server, OK, so nudie mags is a good one. It's going to show items. Here are my nudie mags distributions. This is the file that it shows me where everything is. So we're going to need this require items procedural distributions. It's just something that, that you know it needs to be part of the file name. <clears throat> and then here we have table that insert procedural distribution list. And then this is where the different things show up, right? And we need dot items. Then this has to say the uh, mods ID and then the item, or I guess in this case we'll say base, which is fine. And then the uh, sort of spawn frequency, um, the, the chance that item will be will show up there. So the lower the number, the less chance. So what I could do is if I had like one or two places that it was really ever going to show up, it'd be easier. I could just grab that one or two, like it's just grab army surplus misc. And I could grab this and, and paste it here. And then uh, actually, hold on. I just want that. So paste it there, paste it there. That could be that, right? I don't want to do that one, so we're not going to do that. But then I have to copy this and I have to make a new one and change it to break room counter and all these different ones. So what we're going to do, we're going to use Excel once again to expedite that code a little bit. So we're going to take all of this. These are the places that I want to show up. We're going to paste it once. We're going to paste it twice. We're going to take the items one and we're going to grab it here beginning of the second pace where it goes from W back down to A and we're going to take this and drag it out to there now this is the skill literature we just want this to say base for right now so we're going to highlight all of those control D to duplicate you should be able to do the same kind of stuff in Google Sheets but I yeah I don't know <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to trust that. Um, I just know Excel really well. So, uh, But table.insert procedural distribution list goes under everything. Then there's the name of the file. So it opens with a quote. And then there's that end quote. And then the items.base. And then this is the name of the item. So all the only one item that we have that we're going to ha find around the world is WP dried meat can. So we'll paste that here. And we will drag it down to there. And then we'll take this. So this has to end with the quote, and the other one does not. So this, the one just ends like this. So we'll grab all those, put that there, grab this, and just put it there. And then we will take this and drag it out down to the end of our data set. So now we have the table.insert procedural distribution lists, the location, and then items one. So this just says that I have a, a one, I guess, percent maybe, or one weight chance to find that. And then if I organize or sort by, so I've got everything here and these look good. If I sort by location, bam. Now I get the table.insert army, uh, I get the, the drive meat can and then one, drive meat can and one for break room and so on. So this is all the code that I need. It was done just like that. So I make a new file, paste this in, and then I need to get the requires items distributions, put that here. And I think that's it. At the bottom there might be another piece of code I need to add in. Nope, 
So that's it. And then we're going to save this file. <coughs> Desktop, drive meets, contents, mods, that, media. This would be in, I believe it was Lua, server. And then there's like another thing. I'm not 100%. Don't. We're going to figure it out. I'll figure out where to put that. So Lua source file. So we're just going to change this to WP dried meats distributions. It doesn't have to be named exactly like this. I'm just neurotic and want to make sure things are in places that look good. I, I want it to be very, you know, friendly. So minimize that. We don't need it anymore. Server items. It's inside of here, a new folder called items. And the distributions go in here. And there we go. Now we should be able to find, uh, no, we should be able to find our can meets throughout the world, and they should have the requisite um, doodads here, the little, the world static models. So we're going to test all of that by first going into my mods and deleting this version, heading up to this, and then uh, moving this over here. So we're going to just, yes, copy and test it out. So remember, we're going to change, we're going to check the time that it takes to do that. We're going to check the models and then we have to check the procedural distributions, which we're just going to pop ourselves into a couple different places uh, locally and, and just check the, the various places to make sure that any of it worked. It did not work. The next like 40 minutes is not crucial to the video at all. I'll tell you right now, I screwed up my Excel function where I should have dragged this cell to the end of the first half of the data, not this one. Long story short, this made it so that I needed to go in and put a double quotation in a lot of places. So just be very careful if you're going to use that method. And then I did some trial and error and realized the meat should have been set to a scale of 0 0.3, which is the size of the meats already. Um, 0 0.25 would have also worked because freeze dried meat is a little bit smaller, but it wasn't really a super important detail. Just letting you know that in the post edit. Um, so we got these now. Hopefully the world models work. Drop. There we go. Big old can of meat. That's really nice. Okay, let's see. So I finished this up last night, kind of forgot where I was, but we got this going, fixed everything. So we're going to copy this, find, go to the replace, and we're going to replace it with um, like one, maybe one, yeah, one, one's fine. Okay, so replace all. Some places I kind of want it to show up a little more often, like the camping gear store, I want it to show up a little more. Uh, creative canned food, create camping, maybe a two. Um, crate canning, nah. Um, and this is important for the mod. I mean, I can set everything to one, but it's nice to have like uh, just a little bit of variety, make it you know a little more. Um, common in certain places than others. Kitchen dry food, we'll set that to two. Kitchen canned food, we'll set that to four. You know, that's why not, right? Um, plank stash miscellaneous, we'll set that to five. We really want to put that in there a lot. Um, cell rant, no. I think that's good, so we'll save that, that's fine. The other issue was that the models were a little bit too small, so we'll set that to point three. I think that'll look good and save. So I think we've got everything that we need to go ahead and release this mod. Um, we'll test it one more time with a new world. So we'll go ahead and play. And we're going to do it with um, extremely common loot everywhere. Another good thing to do is um, just set it as like your default mod while you're testing it. Um, that really helps a lot. Uh, whatever's fine, doesn't matter. Cheating anyway. All drills. Fine. Well, rows. What I know, like the area, I know the different things. Um, yeah, we'll just add. What is it? N the nimble, like the dexterous. There we go. So I can get stuff in my inventory quicker. 
and oh, you know what? Nutritionist. So that I can make sure the nutrition values of my food are correct too. Michael Swartz. You know, I forgot something entirely, didn't I? I sure did. I forgot two really big things. One, I forgot to update the mod. Idiot. And two, I forgot to do the sandbox settings and set it to high loot, the thing I literally said. I'm drinking the coffee right now that's going to give me actual intelligence when I'm working and doing these things. So don't worry. That is, um, it's gonna be fixed. So, okay, we'll just click on mods down here. And from here we can determine the mods we want. So in this case, we'll turn this on, turn this off, and accept. It's gonna reload the LUA, but it's only gonna do that one time. It's not gonna do that every single time we have to go in. So when the game loads, it'll load with that mod already defaulted. So we're going to make a solo campaign, custom sandbox. We don't have to choose the mod because we already got it, right? Cool. Rosewood's good. And then loot rarity, canned food, abundant. I think it's canned food, but we'll just set non-canned food to abundant as well. And then other just in case that's not, you know, what I wanted. Move forward, I want dexterous and nutritionist just to make sure I can see the values of my food and move things in, out of my inventory quickly. Albert Reed is fine. It's always a mohawk. Every time the default male character shows up, it's a mohawk. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, who do you think is playing this game? Just a bunch of punk wannabes. Like, just give me long, normal hair like people in kentucky didn't have mohawks in the 90s i don't think maybe they did i don't know it just cracks me up that that's always the default it's like yeah you want a mohawk too bad <laughs> here you go like okay so now with abundant loot i should be able to find plenty of canned goods oh, what canned corned beef dried meat can perfect grab those um, which is really nice. Bullying zombies, because I can. Stupid. Okay, so, I, yeah, everything works fine. Um, and we're set. That's that's the mod done. So, we got the game ready and done. Now all I have to do is uh, move it. So here is where we have, like I said, the actual mod itself. This is the folder that's going to be in uh, the workshop. So we're going to go into here, and we're going to just drag this and... Hold control to copy, and there we go. W. Patrick Drive Meats. And we've got all the, the contents of the mod, everything in there. Um, and then you'll be able to go in and, and, you know, install this mod, just subscribe to it or whatever, and then you can piece it apart if you wanted to. And, you know, build your own mod by just following all the little bits and bobs here. But this, this is everything. The only thing I want to change is uh, the workshop text. It just says meats, so that's gotta I gotta fix that, but <clears throat> it's gonna populate a lot of the information. So we'll see that in a minute here. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and play. Hi, here again editing for another quick voiceover. See where it says no connection at the bottom of the Steam um, window here? I'm gonna save you another 20 minutes of footage of watching me troubleshoot that. Just make sure you're not in airplane mode when you go to upload this to Steam. I mean, yeah, we accomplished everything. We got fresh textures, we got the items to exist, the recipes work as expected, and they show up in the places that we told them to show up, which is really cool. We even did a little breakdown on how to get a list of all the places and how organizing them in a spreadsheet program makes them easier to code a bunch of things if you want your item to show up in a lot of places. So from the Zomboid home screen, we're gonna click Workshop and Create and Update Items. Here we have Dried Meats, next. Um, so for the description, I'm gonna make it say something a little bit better. Say, um, hello. While I'm speeding this up, please note that what you put here is what displays on your mod page on the Steam Workshop. So make sure it's well-written and sounds professional. As well, I keep a copy somewhere on your hard drive just in case. I've had it clear out once before. Anyway, I think, I think it's just normal. It's just keeping this in the 
the video. So we'll accept that. And now we have W Patrick's Drive Meets. Right here, we've got everything. We've got the preview image, visibility public. It is for build 41. Um, it's, it's balanced, I would say. Food for sure. Uh, items and realistic, I guess. I has textures and models. I guess I could add those tags, but that's not really, you know, it's not, I'm, yeah, we'll add them just because I did go through the effort to, to put them on there. But if I need to remove it later, I can, doesn't matter. It's not trait, vehicles, or weapons, so that's good. Um, so there we go. Next, uh, this is a new workshop item, so it needs to create an ID for it, which it'll do. Um, not really gonna edit change notes because I'm just adding it and update to the Steam Workshop. It'll run through this. And there we go, there's my ID right there. And voila, I've created a mod, I've uploaded it to the Workshop, and now you can go play it. So let's go ahead and close out of here. And let's go to the workshop. And pretty soon we'll see it. Let's see. Files you've posted. Hey, look at that. We have a new mod. Kind of matches all the other little things. But there we go. And there's everything. It adds this to it, which is great. So from here, I think I'm just going to um, update this and put up the video of how the mod actually works. And, uh, oh, I still have to fix that can texture. It's fine, I can do all that, it's not a problem. But yeah, we, uh, we have a successful mod uploaded from conception to release. Um, that's it, there you go. Good luck and, and have fun uh, making mods out there, guys. If anyone's made it to the end of this video, I thank you greatly. This was a huge effort, as you saw, and I cut this down from over three and a half hours, and even then I did some of this stuff like off camera, like deciding where the items spawn. Um, I, again, I don't normally ask people to do this, but if you do, you know, please subscribe to the channel, right? It'll bring me a lot of joy and enthusiasm to continue putting out content like this, which for you is free. So yeah, just thank you again.